In this video, I'm going to show you how to do oscillator sync with FM synthesis. This trick was taught to me by Manny Fernandez, who goes by Dr. Synth. He's renowned and probably the best FM programmer in the world. So let's jump right into it. I have an oscillator here called Double Saw. And what this allows me to do is modulate the phase of a stacked sawtooth oscillator in real time. So if I only want to hear this second oscillator here, I have to first turn it up. And then in my mixer, I'm going to invert the phase of oscillator 2, which right now is just on a saw. I could switch it to just a saw it, just to make it make sure. Um, either way, with either setting, I would still be using a uh, just a sawtooth wave. Um, I just don't want you to get confused, so I'm switching this to a saw. Um, so now, uh, since everything is starting on phase zero, we are only going to hear this uh, this oscillator that allows me to modulate the phase with this control here. And I need to, of course, route. I always forget to do this. Route to my individual outputs, so we can see it in our oscilloscope. And while I'm doing housekeeping, let's turn up our sustain, give us a gate style envelope. So let's move this control and see what happens to this oscillator. You see that it moves. And the uh, phase goes from 0 to 100, which is a full phase rotation of this oscillator, a single cycle. So you can see that we will end up in the same spot when we're at 0 to when we are at 100. So we're right about at 4 here for this. Now we end up again at 4. So what if I modulate this control in real time? I can patch an LFO into it. And before I turn up the LFO intensity, I want you to notice something about changing the phase live. If we are decreasing in number, if we are moving the phase of the oscillator towards us, we get a kind of Doppler shift. We hear an increase in pitch. If I move it away from us, we hear a decrease in pitch. So what happens if I modulate it with an LFO? Start turning it up. We have a triangle wave LFO here. Let's turn down the rate. See that we are, of course, moving the phase back and forth. And as I turn up the intensity, and we can see that we, the distance of back and forth movement is increased. If I give it an intensity of 50, we'll be moving a whole cycle length. And what if I change the modulating oscillator to something else, like a saw? We will be modulating the uh, position of the phase, the phase position, and then we'll be jumping back to the starting point with full intensity. So it will appear as if we are just simply continuously modulating the oscillator in a single direction. And this manifests as an uh, as a, I believe, uh, a increase in pitch, right? And if I want to exaggerate what uh, that pitch shift, then I can just simply increase the rate of this uh, LFO. Yeah, so we're increasing the pitch. You can hear a little click as the phase is getting reset as we're reaching the edge here. So that's the basics of phase modulation. And that is what is happening with um, DX style synthesizers, with, with FM synthesizers. So let's jump over to an FM synthesizer. We'll be using, of course, Mod 7 for this. And now while just listening to Mod 7, let's um, set some things up. Let me, of course, increase the sustain of my amp envelope. And then for oscillators 1 and 2, I'll go ahead and remove their envelopes. Now in my patch panel, I'll patch the output of oscillator 2 into oscillator 1. 
And for the waveforms of oscillator 1 and 2, I'm going to choose sawtooth waves. Now, jumping over to oscillator 2, which is the um, modulating operator. It's the modulator, and oscillator 1 is the carrier. Actually, real fast, let me turn up the, uh, the gain here. Um, so as I turn up the modulation intensity, we'll see the phase start to change. And in fact, to make it more obvious, let's let's do what we did with, with the other synthesizer. Let's use a triangle one to begin with, triangle waveform to begin with. And also, of course, if I'm going to make this behave like that LFO, I'll need to drop the ratio down to zero and uh, bring up the hertz value to something like 5.5 five is probably fine. So now we are just listening to oscillator one. Let's modulate its phase with oscillator two. You see that back and forth movement. Now, of course, if we were to use a sawtooth wave, you see movement in one direction and then it snapped back. I also want you to know, notice the shape of this sawtooth waveform. Both these saws are shaped the same, so this modulator is shaped the same way as the carrier, uh, of course, just traveling at a much slower rate. Um, notice this, uh, this, this bend here. And you could see that manifest in the modulation as it gets towards the end before it snaps back. You see it kind of slow down. And it might become more obvious with a faster rate. Let's give it some more modulation intensity. So we are traveling a full cycle length. And then, of course, with a, a faster rate, it will exaggerate the pitch shift that we are creating from this um, LFO. Now notice that we are falling in pitch. That's, of course, because our modulator is um, moving through values in a negative direction moving through phase values in a negative direction. Um, if I were to go into my patch panel and I'll patch into mixer one and then patch mixer one into operator one and then go into that mixer and flip the phase, then we would hear the opposite effect where we would be creating an increase in pitch. So this is where we start getting to oscillator sync territory. Um, if I bring the ratio back up to one, so these now have the same frequency, then I will be uh, resetting this phase at the frequency of this uh, of this modulator, which is exactly what oscillator sync is, right? We have a master that is resetting the phase of the slave at the rate of its frequency. So let's... Um, uh, turn up the modulation depth here, which is going to give us more distance, more pitch shift and phase resetting. So we are effectively fitting more cycles uh, into the snap window. Again, this is exactly the same thing that's happening with oscillator sync. Um, and so let's uh, let's listen to that. And before I do, I'll already know that our mod I already know that our modulation intensity is not going to be that high. So I'm going to patch um, into multiple outputs, and then um, I'll also need to flip the phase of the second output. So these are, you know, they're not canceling each other out. And now let's listen to what happens when we increase our modulation intensity. <laughs> We've created oscillator sync. Another nice thing about this is that if we are using a square wave for our carrier, and then we are doing the opposite, where instead of us effectively increasing the pitch with modulation intensity, we decrease the pitch, then we will create pulse width modulation, just like we get in um, uh, regular oscillator sync. Let me disconnect these because I don't want you to get confused with these other patch points that wouldn't be doing anything. 
So now I'm just patching oscillator 2 back into oscillator 1. Uh, let's give it some modulation depth. Oh, and I forgot, I'll also need to offset the phase by 90 degrees. Um, if you want to see what happens if I don't offset the phase, uh, let's try that out. Uh, sync. It seems that, like almost like it's still doing uh, oscillator sync. Let's off the, offset the phase by 90 degrees. Alright, 90 degrees. And of course we can use an LFO to modulate the output of this operator. I'll do that. I'll use LFO1. Some intensity. And let's go to that LFO and slow it down. Oh, I also need to offset its, uh, make it unipolar. Since we're already at zero, I need to just give it volume. Um, slow it down. And it has too much modulation intensity. Let's bring it down to something like 14 is probably fine. Let's speed it up. And let's give it more modulation intensity. There we go. So that's, that's it for this lesson with FM synthesis. Hopefully it was um, illuminating. I really liked the parts uh, with, uh, th this whole process helped me understand uh, FM a lot better. And I uh, hope it helped you too. Okay, bye.